So we just want to um, acknowledge two recent deaths. Mavis Pavis died recently. She was a regular parishioner here at the 9.30 service. Her funeral was held um, a couple of Fridays ago, so we continue to hold her family in prayer. And the other sad news is that Bishop Jim White passed away this week. Um, he'd been struggling with cancer now for a number of years. Bishop Jim was the assistant bishop here in Auckland for I think nine or so years um, and was very active with places like the City Mission supporting them and lots of outward facing ministries. So we do hold his family in prayer and also the diocese in Elegant House and um, Rosemary will be praying for them during our time of intercession. Today our um, service is the care of creation and we thank to Anne, who is preaching today, who's going to pick up that theme. Glenn is watching from the, amongst the congregation, so he's getting a different perspective on church this week. So if you're wondering where Glenn is, he is here, but amongst you all, worshipping with us. I'm going to hand over now to Rosemary. The words are on our screen. Thank you, Rosemary. Our liturgy is on page four, five, six, and on the overhead screen for you. Would you please stand? In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life, amen. amen. Grace to you and peace from God our creator, our love at our beginning and without end, in our midst and with us. God is with us. Here, Here we find new life. Let us give thanks for the coming of God's reign of justice and love. Jesus Christ is good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, and liberty for those who are oppressed. There's a wonderful canticle of praise for Aotearoa. And we're going to say it. If not this Sunday, there isn't a Sunday to say it. So, oh, give thanks to our God who is good. Whose love endures forever. You, sun and moon, stars and the southern sky. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Sunrise and sunset, night and day. Give to our God your thanks and praise. All mountains and valleys, grassland and scree. Glacier, avalanche, mist and snow. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Your kauri and pine, rata and kofi, mosses and ferns. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Dolphins and kafwai, sea lion and crab, coral and nemone, pippi and shrimp. Give to our God your thanks and praise. Rabbits and cattle, moths and dogs. Kiwi and Sparrow and Tui and Hawk. Give to our God your thanks and praise. You Maori and Pākehā, women and men, all who inhabit the long white cloud. Give to our God your thanks and praise. All you saints and martyrs of the southern sea. Give, give to our God your thanks and praise. So we come to a time of confession and hearing God's forgiveness to us. Would you please kneel or sit? Happy are those whose sins are forgiven. Happy are those whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sin to the Lord. I will not withhold my wrongdoings. God forgives and heals us. We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. God forgives you. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away your sin. Approach your God in peace. Amen. We come now to the time that we normally 
uh, invite the children and the youth to, to leave and, and to go off into the different areas. Now, for children's ministry today, have we got that slide? We have. Sarah's already created something that you can be working on in the back corner. We're looking at care of creation, and so are the children. Uh, how can I care for this world? And in those hearts are different ways that they can cut out a heart, write something inside it, and glue it on. So you're under your own guidance today, kids. So the glue, the activities, the paper, it's all up in the back corner. So feel free to, to join in with that as you would like to. And the youth, Connor's back from his time um, doing his uh, block course, so he's going to take the youth out. So why don't I just pray for the children and the youth. Loving God, we thank you for the vitality that children and youth bring to this church. We thank you for the blessings that they give us and the enrichment they have, um, pouring it out on us as much as we appreciate our time with them and they appreciate it, hopefully, um, their time with us. May they learn something new about you today and may they be aware of your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks. And our sentence for today... Restore us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show us the light of your face, and we shall be saved. And our collect for the day, Creator God, you are making the heaven and the earth. You make our earth sensitive to the cry of creation, for justice in land and sea and sky. Give us grace to dedicate us to your service, that we may, we may be brought to the glory of, your, of the children of God, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Would you please sit for our three readings and the readers come forward. A reading from Isaiah chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Let me sing my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more is there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, reading from chapter 3, verses 4 to 14. If anyone else has reason to be competent in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I have had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard that everything is loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things 
and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may gain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies before, lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks, Thanks be Thank to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at the 33rd verse. Praise and glory to God. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves and more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. <coughs> Finally, <coughs> Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And they said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyards to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the Lord. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in our minds 
and in our listening. God be in our hearts and in our understanding. Amen. Please sit down. As I was preparing this week to preach on themes of care of creation, um, I ended up with a question. How does God speak to us? And how do we recognize God's voice among so many other competing voices? In the course of a service, uh, we have some clues as to where we might listen for God's voice. Uh, we have, after all, some very scripted lines. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God's been speaking to us. How are we engaging? This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, the Word. Be on the alert. This shows us, um, helps to remind us of Scripture as the living Word of God to us. And as followers of Jesus, we're probably paying special attention to his words and actions. Mind you, when, when Jesus lived on earth, I've got, I've got something to tell you, he didn't have a halo. I know, you all know that. Um, but actually, he looked a bit like um, a Bruce or, or John or David or, you know, um, or Garth or whatever. Who was to know? Um, you know, his life was just unfolding in front of people. Um, he wasn't obviously God's anointed, the beloved son. But, uh, and that's actually what's going on in our gospel today. Uh, for a little bit of background, Jesus is in Jerusalem, the holy place. He, in fact, is in the temple, the holiest of holy places. And as so often, he's telling a story. And round about him, I'm, I'm sure, are the disciples, um, and, and some crowds, um, anonymous crowds. And we're also told a bit earlier in the chapter that there are the leaders of the people. Um, there are the chief priests, um, the Pharisees, and the elders. Uh, so these are the people who know about scripture and who are the leaders um, of religious observance. Jesus is telling a story, a story with a twist. Uh, it's an old story. We heard it in Isaiah's, uh, the passage from Isaiah um, that we heard read first today. Jesus makes it his own. There was a landowner, he says. Obviously somebody rich with a nice piece of land. And the landowner plants it with grapes. I'm sure he had slaves to do it. And he puts in all the equipment that you need to protect um, the investment and um, in order to make wine. And then he rents out his winery as a going concern and goes off overseas, an absentee landlord. Do you think this could happen in New Zealand? But the tenants default on the deal. They beat up the designated rent collectors. And when the owner's son arrives in person to collect, they calculate that they're going to be able to get away with murder and then sit pretty in possession. In those days, of course, the arm of the law was a bit shorter. And after all, you know, the owner was an absentee, a long way away from enforcement. Now we know, as, we, as the story goes along, we know that Jesus is talking about God as the landowner. And we understand the rent collectors as the prophets, who so often went unheard or misunderstood or maltreated. And we know who the son is, who will indeed be killed. But, of course, we are ahead of Jesus' audience. The vineyard in those days was um, often the, the, the um, Israel. Jesus has changed his story a wee bit, and he's got tenants who are the bad guys. And I think that the um, people who are listening to Jesus have got their own thoughts as to what's going on. I think that they're thinking, the tenants, I bet these are the Romans. We don't like the Romans, we want them to go. 
And so, of course, they're really engaged in this story. Jesus is being a bit subversive, um, preaching if he's talking about Romans. And so when Jesus gets to this crunch line, what will happen when the owner himself comes along? Ha! Huh. He'll get rid of the Romans, they think. And so they reply, what will the owner do? He'll put those wicked tenants to death. Get rid of the Romans. And then he'll put in new tenants. Oh, us. And um, they will, of course, they'll respect the terms of the contract. And the ground crumbles under their feet. Jesus turns the story around on them. Oh. Thanks for that. Oh, there we go. No sermon. What do you think? Time to get out? No? Okay. What was, what was that about acts of God? Uh, it was just the one light. Thank you very much, Antoinette, for being observant. Um, and we've cut, we won't put any of the other lights on up here. We'll just leave the whole lot off. But if anyone does see something, and the uh, people, we will be more uh, vigilant. But it looks like it was just something wrong with that light, so we'll just now leave them off. So we're in a subdued setting now. <laughs> Just checking that people, folks up here are okay about staying up here and don't, and don't want to flee among us. So, here we, here we are with a, a, um, with a story which has become uncomfortable for the listeners. The listeners have been, the listeners have been judged and no wonder they want to get rid of Jesus. I think there is some good news lurking in this story, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But um, I'd like to come back to that first question that I asked. Um, how do we uh, hear uh, the voice of God among us? Um, how, do, how do you recognize the voice of God? If you've got somebody you can talk to, just a quick chat with them, have a little think. And, and by the way, I don't know that there's going to be any wrong answers to this, so you can be really confident, okay? This isn't a trick question. Hmm. Okay? Any thoughts? Hmm? I just said, where's the fire extinguisher? Where's the fire extinguisher? There we go. <laughs> any... Through the Spirit? Through, through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. Absolutely. Yes. Any thoughts? How, how do we hear the voice of God? Through the scriptures, says David. Yes. 
times through the preacher, Christine says, hopefully. <laughs> uh, any, any, other, any other options? Through our prayers. Thank you, Bishop Peter. Um, do you ever notice when you're having a chat with somebody and, you're, and kind of um, the, the atmosphere changes and you, you, you notice that um, the person you're having a coffee with, perhaps, actually has said something significant? Yeah, Any, anything else? Fantastic. How do we know it's God? Um, as Antoinette says, it often comes in more than one way. Yeah, I'm a bit de I tend to be a bit deaf. It's very, it's very good to have some confirmation. And often there's something that resonates within ourselves, isn't there? There's um, uh, some feeling of, of awe or oh, or wow. And I'd like to suggest to you uh, that another source of um, God's word to us actually comes through the voice of the earth. How might you respond to that? Has the earth been speaking to you recently? What are, you, what are we noticing in the news? Sorry? New growth, yes. Indeed, spring's wonderful, isn't it? It gives us courage and hope, yes. Anything else that we notice around, uh, maybe in the news? Plenty of, ah, plenty of negative stuff. What sort of negative stuff? Fire. COVID, yes. I, really, I, truly, I actually believe that, that, um, that in some ways, COVID um, and the other viruses and things that we've had um, are in some sense bringing us sh up short. And plastic in the oceans and extinctions and drought and floods. What is the earth saying to us? Mm. And let's remember spring too. Thank you, Robin, because we need we need that also. Mm. The, um, of, 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 of the earth as perhaps a source of wisdom. Uh, we might think of the story of our beginnings, of all things created by God, and um, here the Bible and science kind of inter intertwine. Um, all things, particles and atoms and molecules and stars and planets and earth and air and water and uh, plants, all living creatures, and after time, after billions of years, human beings. And Genesis 2, chapter 2, tells us that from the dust of the earth, God made Adam, the earth creature, breathed life into him, put him into the garden that God had planted for him, with a purpose to cultivate and care for it. Oh, are we tenants of earth? And what happens when the owner comes? Personally, I'm inclined to think that it's not so much a matter of what God might do to us as a, that the ex human exploitation of earth will bring with it is bringing with it natural consequences. Um, and um, you know what I mean by natural consequences? Yeah, um, people with children, um, indeed. Uh, when your child in the middle of winter insists on putting on its t-shirt and shorts and sandals and going outside, what a surprise when they get cold and wet. Natural consequences. Well, Earth's ecosystems support our life. And natural consequences for pushing things is going to result in the kind of things that we are seeing in the news. Thank God for the natural cycles of, of regeneration. But also, there's the bite back. If we insist on washing plastic into the ocean, 
when we eat sea creatures, hello, the plastic is coming right back to us. We've been slow to recognize the messengers that are trying to tell us what is going on. And our debt to our landlord is ruinous. This earth story, the voice of God to us, if we are listening, could cause us to despair. And in fact, um, some of our young people and some not so young have already despaired of the future of life on earth for humans. They say it's too late, too late to turn around. And I find that very sobering. I think also that that is not the entire story. People of God that we are, that we claim to be, we have another piece of the story to add in. First, we have Jesus, the messenger of God to us, whom we seek to follow as passionately as Paul did. Jesus came to his people in their own desperate times. I think that God has not yet finished with us. And there is good news hiding even in the gospel story that we heard read today, hiding in what Jesus says to the people of his times. The stone that the builders rejected, he says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. How amazing. That is, God typically favors that which others reject. He does, God does not want to destroy, but to build and to make new. God's plan will continue in those who are willing to be transformed, who will produce the result that God is hoping for. And so, I wonder whether we are willing to be transformed, whether we are willing to turn around again and embrace again the simplicity and the mercy of Jesus. It's easy to forget those wonderful messages that Jesus draws from the lilies of the field, the sparrows that fall, seeds that grow, Jesus certainly heard the earth talking to him of God. Our transformation, a big word with big implications. But we know that humans are capable of change. We are. And especially, though not only, when we see that it's in our own interests. Think of our first lockdown and how ready we were to embrace amazing changes in the way we live. And look how the earth responded. We rejoiced in cleaner, clearer air. And those roads which were so, less, much, less, so much less busy and noisy and smelly. Uh, did you change your life in any way? I know I baked more bread and gardened more, exercised more and bought less. We can change if we're willing. And together we make, can make a difference. We are the body of Christ together. It's de um, so we have, we have a responsibility and the, the wonder of cooperating, please God, with one another. So here in St. Aidan's, we could support and encourage um, our dear Emily Paul, who is our sustainability champion. Yay, but she can't do it alone. Um, she's put her, she's, she's, she's there, we can gather around her. And likewise, our youth in their recycling project. And who knows what else they might challenge us into. Let's keep listening for voices which um, show us God's ways. We, um, um, older ones, we can support policies which may protect the future, protect the new generations, school students, children, our, our grandchildren and their children too, the ones who are yet to come. We could speak and act and vote differently. 
God speaks to us in unexpected ways. I wonder, will we hear and respond to the call of God to us through the voice of earth? To act justly. To love kindness. And walk humbly with our creator. I'll end with the words of today's sentence. Restore us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show us the light of your face and we shall be saved. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. So we stand to affirm our faith in the creed as it is there for you. You, O God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You overcome death. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. So let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. And a prayer for creation. Creating God, thank you that we can worship you in the sure knowledge of knowing that you hear our prayers. Thank you for your many gifts to us and for your support when times are hard. It is your presence with each one of us that brings us strength and joy for your service and as we, as we try to walk in your way. And we thank you for the signs of spring and the hope of new creation. Bring, we thank you for the beauty of the night sky and the quiet lapping of the water at the harbour's edge. On television, there has been showing some wonderful rural advertisements, as if to remind the church to look beyond our city of concrete and into the surrounding green countryside. Scripture reminds us that we have a duty of care. This we do by our actions of conservation, by our saving of life-giving water, by our careful use of chemicals, by the way we dispose of our rubbish, by our efforts to preserve the Kari Forest. Dear God, help us to enjoy your creation and to preserve it for future generations. God of grace, hear our prayer. And a prayer for those affected by COVID-19. Caring God, we pray for your world, for every part of your creation, at this time, we pray for the millions of people struck down by the pandemic that is sweeping the world. As numbers increase day by day and many, many thousands die and bacteria seizes the hearts and our hearts and kills our hopes for a quick recovery. 
Help us to stay calm and be obedient to the orders of our leaders as they endeavor to slow the passage of this virus. Help us to remember that human lives must be valued by our care and loving support and even more than the cost of national debt. We thank you that our people in New Zealand have accepted the pain of restricted lives and worked together to win the battle with COVID-19. Guide and direct the scientists working to make a worthwhile vaccine that will be fairly shared among the nations, both rich and poor. God of grace, And a prayer, sorry. And a prayer for times of uncertainty. Loving God, many people are feeling a strong factor of uncertainty in their lives. Wherever we look, we see hand sanitizers, warning signs, notices, instructions, and all the talk of how to deal with new situations. We distance ourselves from our friends, even though we long to embrace them. We feel joyful, but we cannot sing, and hymns of praise, or even our favorite pop tune. God remind us daily that amid the uncertainty of our lives, you are ever sure, your love is constant, and your truth is there to guide us. Give us a faith to trust, give us faith to trust you, Lord. Give us peace in our hearts, and always, God of grace, hear our prayer. Now let us pray a blessing for those who have asked for our prayers of support. We pray for those who are sick, for those who mourn, especially the family of Bishop Jim White, his wife Jane, and Samuel and Stephen. Sophie, their children. We pray for the school holidays and for Glenn, who's partly on holiday, partly here, and we pray for his family. Pray for those who are candidates in the forthcoming general election, for their families in the political spotlight. Today, the church also upholds St. Francis, a young man who led a wild life and who so converted to Christ that still, some 700 years later, we use his prayer and worship the God that he learnt to love. So we continue now as we pray for ourselves to grow, to trust God, and as Francis did, join in his prayer. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, unity. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, 
to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in struggling that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Sixty in our seat and have our peaceful faces on and exchange those words. So let us stand first of all to exchange the words that we're used to. Blessed be Christ, the Prince of Peace, who breaks down the walls that divide. The peace of God be always with you. Praise to Christ who unites us in peace. So as you exchange that peace, when you get to that time of concluding that, Antoinette will simply have uh, some time of music and you might like to sit down as we just have an interlude and get ready for communion. So peace be with you. Why don't I just pray for the gifts that have been brought forward. Love and God, we thank you for the money that's already been put into our donation box at the back of the church. And we thank you for the food for the ministry at City Mission. May all these gifts continue your work out in the community and continue your ministry in this place. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed, ever living God, to give you thanks. Just to give you thanks to you, the true and living God, through Jesus Christ. You are the source of life for all creation, and you made us in your own image. In your love for us, you sent your Son to be our Saviour, and in the fullness of time, he became incarnate and suffered death on the cross. You raised him in triumph and exalted him in glory, and through him you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. And so we proclaim your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you indeed be glory, almighty God, because of the night before he died, your son Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. So with thanksgiving and hope we say, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth, your resurrection we proclaim, your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, recalling now Christ's death and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us in our celebration, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son, and be filled with his life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. United in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, we raise to you, O God, our songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. So as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. Christ is the bread of life. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. Christ is risen from the dead. So come, God's people, come to receive Christ's heavenly food. I invite you to be seated just as we organise ourselves up here and just to give you some final instructions. I do apologise for all the instructions at the moment. For those that weren't here last Sunday, how we receive communion at the moment is that we exit through our side aisles and come up these side aisles, trying to keep a meter apart. Come across the front, we receive communion from Anne or I standing. Once you've received the wafer or a blessing, then you return to your seats through that center aisle there. We are only receiving communion in the one kind, the wafer, and that is full and as as and as nourishing and as um, life-giving as it would be with the wine as well. If you would prefer not to receive a wafer but would like a blessing, just putting your hand across like this is an indication of that and we can, we can bless you. And if you don't want to come forward at all and want to remain in your seats, that's absolutely fine. The other instruction is over here on the side chapel. We would normally have prayer ministry, but you need to get quite close to people to hear what they're wanting prayer for. So at the moment what we've got is a cubes of paper and a box. If you use your pen you've brought along to church and if you want to write a prayer in there and put it into the box after church, after everyone has left the building, then uh, those prayers will be prayed for specifically and then destroyed. So that's the way we're um, monitoring it at the moment. The other thing that as we come forward for communion today, we have um, a wonderful gift um, of a chamber choir singing for the beauty of the earth. I saw it online, it would be the one that we would normally sing. And um, Anne at the office actually emailed Father Francis Lim in Malaysia and said, can we have permission to show it in our church service? And he said, I would love you to. So they know that we're showing it today. I know the eight o'clock found it a real blessing. So as you come forward, that will be playing and then Antoinette will pick up after that. So... Come, God's people, the table is ready.
Our prayer after communion. God, our provider, from the fruit of the earth, you feed us with the bread of life. Make us good stewards of your gifts and grant us even now in this world a foretaste of that glory to which you are drawing the whole of creation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
So as we go from here to be caretakers of the earth, may God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life be with you today and always. Amen. notices. Keeping with the theme of season of creation, at four o'clock today we have our pet service and our annual blessing of God's creatures. Not of obviously of all of them, but those that you bring along or photos. So don't bring the horse, Mark. I will bless the photo, not the horse. He can stay at home. So um, four o'clock, great way if you've got, um, you know, grandchildren or relations or neighbours have got a pet and it's a great way of bringing them along to church. We'll have it out here in our gathering area. The weather is meant to be fine. God's taking care of that. We'll throw open the doors, keep our COVID one metre spacing and um, hopefully we might see some of you there at four o'clock. Next thing is next Sunday is also the annual Bake Off Day. So we normally have it the week before our garage sale, but as you know, things have shifted around, things have changed quite a lot. So we are going to have that annual Bake Off still after the 9.30 service next week. This week's uh, delicious um, temptations are slices. So if you've been practicing your baker during COVID times, now might be the time to bring along something to sample. So how it works, if you're new in the church, how it works from what I've observed, uh, Glenn might be the expert to keep me straight on this, but from what I've observed, you bring along a slice, make sure it's wrapped in glad wrap and it's all sort of contained and all the rest. We have our mystery judge. I'm not sure how we've got on with our mystery judge, whether that's confirmed, but there will be a judge next week who will sample little pieces of the slices and declare a, a first and a second and a third winner. I don't know that we have a prize. It might be just the accolades of being the, the, the best slice, slice baker at um, St. Aidan's. And, um, and then what we will do is we will sell off slices. You can take them home for your morning teas and things. So bring along some, some loose change to help with that. That would be fantastic. Next one is our fab sale. Last week we spoke about this, our garage sale. Please store our garage sale, memories of our garage sale, store that away for 2021. This is the fab sale, quite separate, quite different, look, gonna look different and you know we're going to try and allay everyone's COVID fears. So we're just keeping a couple of stores, furniture, antiques, box, uh, plants, toys, cakes and preserves. So in the hall we'll just have like three things. We'll have the furniture and then we'll have the toys in one corner and the books in the other. You know, and we'll just spread everything out. And we'll have maybe even a one-way traffic system. So we're going to try and sort of keep our spacings. Hopefully we'll be down to level one by there, but we're just going to see how it's going to work. If you've got some things to sell, hold on to them. We'll let you know about when we can have some drop-off things. But there's quite a lot. Things like bric-a-brac we're not taking this year. We're going to be quite specific. Fab sales, say the date, Saturday the 14th of November. Other notices, uh, no refreshments. While we're in this level two, we're not doing teas and coffees, but it's a great opportunity to either support our lo local cafes or perhaps invite someone back to your place and say, hey, look, you know, why don't you come back to mine? Let's have a coffee and let's have a catch up that way. So do consider that. Emily, in the dark, I'm not sure. Well, were you still there, Emily? Emily's still there. Stand up and come forward and give it a wave. And Mercer's, um, and Mercer, and Priestley has mentioned Emily in our, her sermon. She's going to give us a big wave. There you go. Emily, Emily is a, our sustainability cha um, champion. She went off to Pukekohe about last year, or was it early this year? It's a blur this year and learned all about environment and what we can do. And she's looking at solar panels and water conservation and planting trees and all sorts of different things. So you'll hear more from her. Um, we're just doing the way for today because we've probably heard enough for today. But Emily's going to be ready with something a bit more scripted in the future. Thank you, Emily. And her article is in the magazine if you haven't read it. The last thing is while we're trying to do our bit to conserve paper, and here I am with all my bits of paper, if you want to receive the newsletter via email, I know a number of people while we were doing worship from home, they sort of said, oh, you know, I really miss our newsletters. And Anne sort of, Anne in the office sort of said, we're doing a newsletter every single week. Are you not looking at them? So we have got them online. But if you would like to see, receive it in an email, there's a clipboard at the back of the church on the, on the foyer desk. Sign up and that will save us some um, paper and we'll try and not print off so many in the future. 
I think that's about our lot, apart from celebrations and anniversaries and birthdays. Do we have any this week? We do. Sarah's got a hand up. Or is it Finn? Somebody back there. Sarah. Oh, Emily and Stephen have been looking for a house. Are you all right to go all the way back? Emily and Stephen have been looking for about three years now, and a number of people have been praying for them that they might eventually find a house, and they have brought a house. Fantastic. There they go. And you've got one more. Oh, look, he's trying to go undercover. That's no good. That's not how it works here at St. Aidan's, Hamish. Hamish has had a birthday as well. We'll send Anne in your direction as well. So congratulations to Emily and Stephen, and happy birthday, Hamish. Enjoy. All right. Over this way, Anne, down the side, Hamish. Our final hymn, which of course we can't sing, is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of Creation. Is that the right one? It is. Yes? Oh, what are we singing now? Sorry. We're singing War 58, so it'll be a surprise because we all know what WAV is 58 off the top of our heads. Like, you know, that's just. But I tell you what, the 8 o'clock did a great job of humming. So although we can't sing, we can still hum. I'm sure we'll know the tune and we can hum ourselves out. And then, of course, um, Rosemary will send herself out as we're normal with a dismissal. Thanks. Why don't we stand? <laughs>